Red four, red six, cover us. I'm on it. Roger. Everybody else? Hit the target hard, give it everything you got. All teams. I'm going in. Pull up and cover me. Copy that, Black Leader. Good luck, Paul. We at Brown Dog Gadgets love the LEGO X-Wing model. It's a great project, it looks nice, it has good motion built into it, and it's not too hard to build. That being said, it'd be a lot more fun if we could automate it, add some motion, maybe some sound effects, and some lighting effects. To do this, we're going to use a variety of parts and components, all which are very easy to find and fairly inexpensive. Luckily for us, we don't have to add much in the way of Legos, because the mechanics and the gearing is already built into the model. We have to break out the internal gearing to come out the rear of the X-Wing. To do this, we have to disassemble a good portion of the bottom, which isn't too difficult, just obnoxious. The first thing you want to do is take off the wings by taking out these little clips on the rear. Next, remove as much of the bottom as you can until you see the internal gearing. You may need a Lego tool or something else, a screwdriver, to get some of these parts off if they're on there pretty tight. We're going to use a small beveled gear and a very long rod to help break out the gearing to a right angle. Put a spacer on first before your beveled gear to keep everything nice and tight and secure on the inside. At least things start to loosen up once you put everything back together again. This was one of the most frustrating parts of the entire build, so if you're building your X-Wing from scratch, do this while building it. Otherwise, going back and doing it afterwards is annoying. Rebuild your X-Wing as best as possible, and uh, take a look at the box to make sure you're doing it correctly. We're going to use several pulleys and spacers, as well as a 2x4 uh, plate with some holes down the middle to help create some stability on the back end of our X-Wing. After that, use one small spacer, two big spacers, then a large Technic gear, and at the very end, another small spacer. Put that all together and you have a working gear set. Reattach the wings as well as the rubber bands, uh, just the same way you took them apart. And that's the last we're going to actually mess with the LEGO mechanics and gearing, so you can put that to the side for now. There are many ways to mount your X-Wing onto something, but we're using this large gray plate and these large black bricks to do that. The important thing is that your X-Wing is nice and secure on the plate and that there's space on the back end to house the gearing and the electronic parts. How you do this is entirely up to you based on what LEGO pieces you have available. Someone far more LEGO Technic savvy than us could probably put together a better gearbox, but for what we're doing, this works pretty well. And if you're using regular LEGO components, like a LEGO motor, this would work the same way. We're using a single worm gear to drive that larger gear up above. This gives a lot of torque at a slow speed, which is what we need to manually move those X-Wing wings up and down. The rest is just a bunch of random parts we had to make things nice and secure and tight. The big issue is all the stresses we're putting on there, so just make sure if it doesn't work, try again. But this is the basic idea you'll be needing to get everything to work properly. I found it helpful to put some Technic gears on the back end of our large rod and large LEGO Technic gear to give it a bit more stability. But as you can see, from the front side, you can't really see much of that stuff, and it leaves a lot of room for the electronics and other components while still looking good and being nice and solid and secure. We designed some laser cut adapters to go from a standard 9G continuous rotation servo to a LEGO Technic environment. We have those on our website as well as the files to make your own. But from there, we just used another LEGO gear to kind of hook everything together, and then a rod coming out of it to go into our worm drive. The other components are just there to give us the proper spacing for everything. 
We had to go back more than once and remove a couple of components after the first build to get everything spaced out properly. I have no idea why the spacing didn't work out from build one to this demonstration build. But once your spacings are correct, hook everything together, make sure they're nice and secure, and yeah, line everything up, hook the uh, shaft into the worm drive, and give it a try. The hard part is finished. Hooking up the electronics is really easy. To do this, we're going to be using our Crazy Circuits robotics board, a couple of LEGO compatible LEDs, some conductive nylon tape, a $7 MP3 player board we got off Amazon, and an ultrasonic rangefinder so the entire thing is motion activated, mostly so we can annoy other people when they walk by. They're all hooked together via some female to female jumper cables, and we have a couple of these little tiny old Sony speakers we're using for audio output. Our Crazy Circuits robotics board is basically an Arduino Nano on a nice breakout board with pin headers on the rear end. We've got these nice Lego compatible holes on the side which we'll be using to connect to the nylon conductive tape, which then connects to the small LEDs we're going to be putting on the bottom side of the Lego X-Wing. The pin headers on the back end make it really, really easy to hook up your rangefinder and your MP3 player without having to run conductive tape all over the place. But you could if you wanted to. Our Crazy Circuits LEDs hook up via conductive tape. Again, they're just pressure fitting on over the top of the tape, and then they're going to go on the bottom side of the X-Wing wings for some fun lighting effects. They're very handy, and they're designed to work with LEGO from the get-go. I made a simple parallel circuit along the bottom of the X-Wing, just connecting our two sides with conductive tape. We'll then connect those via another piece of tape to the robotics board, very simply, and then the robotics board will just pop on top of this tape and we're connected for the LEDs. The last thing to do is hook up all of our components to the pin headers. First the servo, then the rangefinder, then the MP3 player. Afterwards, just upload your code from your computer and you're good to go. Our code is pretty generic. It's set up so that the motion sensor activates the servos that run for a set amount of time, then they pause for a set amount of time to play the audio clip, and then they go again for a set amount of time before the entire thing resets. You'll want to change those times based on what kind of audio clip you're using. Ours is 23 seconds, so it's set for that much in the code. If you're using this for a different project, you'll want to change the timing for the servos as well as the audio clip. It's all very easy in our code and just straightforward and pretty simple. Overall, this project can be applied to a wide variety of LEGO-based models and your own creations. Otherwise, apply this to anything else that's kind of LEGO compatible or you can work servos and lighting into. If you're looking for a diagram, step-by-step -step picture directions, the code, and even the robotics boards, the specialized LEDs for LEGO and that conductive nylon tape, you can visit our website at crazycircuits.com. Otherwise, you can find the MP3 player and rangefinder off Amazon for a couple of dollars. But in general, grab these parts from us or from somewhere else, use our code and have fun with it. But yeah, show us off your really cool LEGO creations and what kind of fun stuff you can do. Our next big project is to apply this to a LEGO BB-8, but that's for another day.